What's up, y'all? This is John, and we just added this new layout to Josephine. It's like a split header layout that has uh, this kind of split transparent color overlay over here on this side. Um, and then it also has this overhang kind of deal, this row. And normally this wouldn't be too bad, but since it's between two sections and we have this parallax here, it's a little trickier to make this happen. And I want to show you how you can adjust it in case um, your text is longer than two lines or your text is different than what we have. Right now, it really works well. Um, let me see if I can go down to, to mobile here and tablet. I, I make adjustments for it going down to the different widths here. And you can see it's actually a little bit off there. Um, and then on mobile, it just, it just goes in the middle there. And actually, it looks like it, it's missing something there. So we can just go in and we'll work with this to see how we can get this uh, better. And I'll, I'll, uh, looks like I need to add some fixes to that. But, all right, so let's say we're going to go in here and this is the page. We're going to find that tagline, which is right here. And let's say we're going to add a little, uh, something more to it. Um, Make your site beautiful. Enjoy. Check it out today, or something like that. And then I'll go ahead and um, save this. Okay, so now it's not quite centered anymore, and which is fine. But um, but I, I want to get that exactly centered and whatnot. So you have a couple options. You could go um, to the actual child theme and update the CSS there, but if we ever send out an update, then that change would be lost. Um, so normally you'd want to put your changes in the Divi theme options, like your new, your new CSS <clears throat> that we're going to write to edit this. You'd put it down here in the custom CSS. Um, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to, I'm just going to put it right here in the page CSS. That way I can just worry about being on this page, not to switch back and forth. But you'll want to put it here. And then also, if you're going to use multiple, multiple uh, versions of this throughout your site, you'd want to, you'd want to target it um, based on, you'd probably want to give this row that, that contains it. Right now it has this overhang, but you'd want to give it a certain ID. That way you could just make adjustments to this one and then make adjustments to other ones as need be. I only have this one, so I'm not going to worry about doing that. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and right click here and inspect this. I'm going to raise my inspect element there. Okay, so if I scroll up here, I see that here's our div class overhang. And this stuff right here is just the padding that's being set inside Divi. So if we go in here on this row, you'll see this is the, uh, the yeah, this is the the row, it has some, that's the wrong row. That's the features row. Tagline, here we go. Yeah, it should have this overhang class. But you'll see that under design, there's some padding here that's, that I've done just, and that's the padding that's going around, you know, this, the black area here. That's the padding that's making that space. And so that is what, that's what this padding is. But then this part, section overhang, dot overhang, um, that, is, that is what's controlling the positioning of it. And then it's also, uh, let's also look at the sections that it's containing. So the section above it that has all these features in there, it has padding of... Um, 80, 175, 50, 150, and then 65, 30. That's actually where, on mobile, when it got all funky, that's why, because it had all the space, and then it got down to mobile and didn't have enough space. So it looks like it's almost double. So I'm going to go ahead and change this one to, like, 100, because I think that's why that was doing that on mobile. Um, but you'll see that we're trying to make extra room down here for this, for this guy that slid up. So we'll go ahead and then we'll look at the actual section that holds the the overhang. And it has a class of section overhang. 
and this is where you could give an ID to target just that one section overhang if you wanted to. Um, but you see the padding is set to zero for the top. And that's why when I when I click when I undo this top minus 85, it just sticks right to the top of this section because there's no padding uh, in that section. Like yeah, you don't see any any uh, yellow up there. Okay, so as you can guess, I just need to modify this this top button here. So if I kind of just inch this up a little bit, looks like right there is about right about 105. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy and go into my code editor and just paste that in. And I'm just going to keep I'm just going to keep uh, the thing that I'm changing here top. And I'm going to go ahead and save this just to have it as a backup. I'm going to copy that and paste that code into into our CSS area, which you'll do in the theme options, unless you just want to target the one on this page, actually. All right, so, so far, so good. That looks perfect. Um, so then I'm actually going to flip it over here into responsive mode. And I'm going to choose responsive mode here. That way I can, I can drag this out myself. And I'll make it a little taller here. Okay, so that works great, and it looks like when it gets down to um, when it gets down to about eleven twenty-four there, you know, I could I could go in and reposition that. And that's what we'll do. So we'll find out exactly where it it goes to that third line, that fourth line. So it looks like right there at eleven. Here's eleven ninety, eleven eighty-nine. It goes down. And so then I just need to remember that, 1189, and then I need to move this back up here to probably like 120. There we go. So I'll come over here, I'll make a new media query, and I'll say uh, 1189, I believe, is what we decided. And then I'll copy this, I'll come in here, and one, negative 120 is what we said, I believe. So save, copy that, come over here. Put it in our CSS area and update. And here we are at 1189, and this should be should stay in the same spot since it's a uh, since we now added that code. Yep, and it does. So let's see here. Yep, there's our negative 120. It's overriding our 105 that we had. Um, so we'll keep going down here. All right, so it looks like at 980, it does the classic break. So at 981, that's the one I usually check. It looks pretty good. So 980, let's go check that. It still looks great at 980, but then right there at, uh, let's just inch it down here. At 965. So I'll go ahead and run over here. I'm just going to, now I can just copy this guy and just say 965 and then we'll go get our new value here it looks like I want to try to get it right in the middle of this third line and I'm kinda I kinda like staying to round values that's why my, they're all like divisible by five but that's just me being anal so 140 And I'm not going to refresh every time because we know it's going to work. I'm going to keep going down here. Okay, there's the other. There's another one, and eventually it'll just go full width. But we. But you can see with not much time, so 8:31. With not much time, you can make this be perfect. And then this one, I just want to get in between the, the two lines here, since there's uh, six lines. And that looks pretty close, maybe down a little bit. 160. I think I see a pattern. 
Okay, and then we'll just keep going down here. Okay, so right there, it goes to the mobile. And actually, um, we want to move. We want to take the top thing totally off now because we want to bump it down here. There's all this space down here. We're covering text up here. So let's uh, let's go ahead and see what that would look like. Let's do up here. I'm just going to say top zero. And that's actually what I want. That actually looks really good. So at 767, I think that's when it's doing it. Yep, 767, we want top to be zero. And earlier when I made that change for the section above to give it more padding, I probably didn't need to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all this code now, and we're going to go over here, and we will go ahead and dump all that and save, update. Oh, I updated it before it had the page fully ready. There we go. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take off that that padding again or take it back down to what it was I believe it was uh, it was here yeah 65 this was set to 30 let's keep that so it still has the drop shadow too um, and it still has the, the hover which I'm fine with but I will show you how to change the hover color Oh, it's not letting me scroll now. That's great. There we go. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, maybe I should have stuck with 60, but you can you can figure that part out. Um, but yes, yeah, so the rest of this looks looks pretty good. It's all... Yeah, let me go ahead and get out of this responsive mode. Because I think it's... I think it was kind of messing up the me being able to click on it. Okay, so so there we go, we go down and it, it just starts to, it centers and you can make those adjustments depending on your text length and yeah, it's great. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change the background color of that row something else and then we'll need to try right now it's black I'm gonna go ahead and try like a like a tan color I think whoops like a sand color actually maybe I should just pick one of these here um hmm. What's, what's this one? There we go. Let's try that one. Okay, that's a little. Make it a little lighter. Okay, I like that. Update. And wait. Wait for it, right? Okay, sure, um, but then my glow now is all kinds of not right. So let me go ahead and inspect here and see where this glow is happening. There's our overhang, and if I select hover, there's our there's our glow. But it has a natural glow already on it. Box shadow. Okay. Okay, so I'm doing that box shadow there. So I might as well go fix that real quick with the color that I want to use. So let me go back into the row here. I'm going to grab this color code, copy that, and then go down to the box shadow area. There we go. Shadow color. It's 30%. I'll remember that because I'm going to take this down to 30%. 
And I'm going to copy this really quick and just put it somewhere. I'm just going to put it right there because I'm going to need that in a second. I'm going to go ahead and save, update. While that's updating, I'm going to go ahead and right click on this, inspect it again, and make sure my overhang row is selected. And I'm going to hit hover because I do need to copy all this right here because this is the hover code and we're going to change that that color there. So I'm going to go up here to um, right underneath this first rule and paste in that hover code. Yeah, and normally it'd be all in one line like that. So I'll do that. And then I'm going to go over to this, grab this color that I have, this RGB, this color here. Go back to my code editor and just swap out that. Now remember 70% there, 0 0.7. So we'll just change this to 0 0.7. And as you can see there, it, this um, brackets gives a little preview there of the color. So I'll save. I'm going to copy all this as well. And once this is done doing its thing, it's being all slow, I'll paste it in here. All right, so clear all that out, paste it in. And this should be our final, final code here once this refreshes. There we go. Okay, so you can kind of see a little of the, of the gold sand glow, but if I hover, then it gets, I get more of the sand glow. So that is the tutorial on how to work with this um, overhang piece to, to change the uh, color, to change the, the positioning of it, and then to change the, the glow color. And then down here on, on, tab, on tablet or mobile, it still has the glow cover, color. And if you don't want that, then you could just use media queries to, to say uh, box shadow none or whatever and it'll be for, or box shadow transparent or whatnot so all right well thanks for watching the tutorial thanks for purchasing josephine hope you love it and we'll see you around stay fly